in the boating world is, it, I, I call it the last bastion of free enterprise because the barriers to entry are, are pretty minimal, almost non-existent. Detailers Roadmap Cruise Control, where we navigate the roadways of life, business, and everything in between. Hey guys, it's Kevin Davis from the Cruise Control Podcast. Today, I'm here with Jay Bentley from G-Technic. Before I get started, I want to remind you, you go to detailersroadmap.com and check out the little button at the top that says book a demo. Give yourself an opportunity to talk about what you got going on with SEO, web. Detailers Roadmap team is amazing support. Uh, they're also doing some crazy stuff right now with tons of new technology. Nick and his team on the web development side have been doing just nut stuff from a marine standpoint, PPF tent, layovers, sliders, all this other technology stuff that they're doing. So, hey, check that out, detailersroadmap.com. Before I get started, let's talk about Jay and his, I'll give him a quick bio and then I'll give him a chance to uh, give us his famous uh, superhero backstory as we do on this podcast. Jay's the business development manager at G-Technic Marine North America. Um, he began at G-Technic in October 2020 after a crazy year-long attempt at being a financial advisor, which we definitely are going to get that story. Uh, that experience, which was boring, maybe that's part of the story, told him that he needed to be back in the boat world. He's been in the boating industry for almost 20 years. Although he's not a detailer, he now knows how to detail a boat, polish, correct it, and apply ceramic coatings. Um, he grew up in the Atlanta area which is ironic because that's where G-Technic is, uh, North America, that's the headquarters uh, in coming, and moved to Florida in 2006, where he is now. I've He's worked in the automotive world, the motorcycle world, and landed in the boating world when he joined Yamaha in 2004. Territory with G-Technic Marine is super small. It's only the entirety of the United States. Uh, he's like a one man, one man wrecking crew when it comes to the Marine side of G Technic. Uh, and he spends 60 to 70% of his time on the road, growing the band and growing the brand and sales. So dude, that's, I've been in that position, um, yep. doing all that travel. I was a corporate trainer in the corporate world for a while. And okay. my territory was like everything East of like Mississippi or everything West of Mississippi. So like, you back in the day when we had phone books, right? You wake up and you're like, all right, well, let me check the phone book to remember what I city I just woke in. <laughs> yeah, it's like, hey, where's the yellow pages guy? Hey, we're, right, we're, so aging we're, you know, yeah, we're aging ourselves pretty bad right now. <laughs> that's right. You just look on your phone and have it tell you where you're at. Uh, hey, Google, right, exactly. Right? Yeah. Um, so, hey, that's your bio uh, in a brief nutshell. I want to hear yep. kind of well, on this podcast, we always talk about the superhero backstory, right? So, like, all right. You know, you're you're you've ha had such a long career at this point. Kind of walk mm -hmm. us through like as much detail as you want, like how you got here. I want to hear that financial advisor story. <laughs> kind of where where you are now, and kind of what you what you foresee is the future, and and all that. And then we'll kind of dig in from there. All right, cool. Yeah. So the uh, jumping into the financial advisor bit that was backing up a little bit. So all the all the people that I, I deal with are typically independent business owners, boat dealerships, those kind of people that, you know, they've they've struck it out on their own and, and have done most of them fairly well. And so I was like, you know, I, I I like coaching these people. I like hearing their stories. I like helping them out. So let's try doing it myself. And the um I have some friends that are financial advisors. There were some things going on with one of the boat builders I was working at that you know, weren't necessarily eh, leading to a lot of uh, satisfaction. And so I talked to a couple of the, my guys that are friends that are financial advisors, and they're like, hey, there's a territory open uh, probably about 20 miles from you that's not too far away. Uh, the demographics are good. The potential is there. There's an office that's open. So why don't you try it? I was like, well, I guess there's no better time than to, you know, than now to try and start my business. So it took all the licensing tests, passed those, and went through the training sessions, figuring out how to, to sell the product, present the products, because uh, financial is completely different than, mm. than Boat World. Uh, but it also tells you that there's a, a complete dearth of financial literacy out there. And, and so you, you wonder how there's so much money, but then there's a lot of people who don't know how to manage it. And so I was trying to figure out how to, 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 to incorporate that. 
And so got the, what they call, this particular advisory firm calls it the can sell date. So you, you've gotten your licensing, you pass the background checks, you've gone through their training systems, you've passed the um, their training systems and all that. <clears throat> and they're like, hey, you're good to go. Go out and this particular advisory firm, their method of prospecting is, is door knocking. So get my can sell date, go out, knock on doors. In Florida, it's hot. So first thing you learn <laughs> is you don't wear a coat and tie. <laughs> you, you ditch those and it's just, you know, your tie is up there loose, wear your sunglasses, sunscreen, and, and go that way. Uh, so about two weeks in, uh, all the COVID stuff hit. Mm. And so all of the prospecting methods that I had in place, wanted to incorporate, wanted to try, gone, 100% done. And so sitting in the office, working my LinkedIn connections, calling people, emailing, saying, hey, uh, send your, give me your money. I want to manage it. Uh, <laughs> I have no experience, but, uh, you know, you can trust me. And so uh, that just kind of, the, the, the whole plan went kaput and looking through the help wanted sections of no longer the yellow pages or the, or the paper, but you know, online it was indeed and, and things and places like that. Um, I kind of realized that 15 years prior worked in the boat industry like that, like going to the marinas, like going to the boat shows, like being on the water, in the water, around the water. Let's get back in the boating world. I am in Florida, a lot of boat builders, a lot of potential, you know, boating and marine industry type uh, situations. And running through Indeed, and I saw this job for G Technic. First, I had to figure out how to pronounce it, which is the <laughs> biggest <-technique>. challenge. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I, I saw that and the title business development manager in the boating world. And so I was like, I, I kind of recognize the products of what they're doing. I've seen a little bit of that here and there on the car side and bought a few of the products and tried them. I was like, this stuff's legit. So I applied uh, and then got the, uh, the call from Rob and Stewart across the UK and said, uh, hey, we want to talk to you. So we did the, the video Zoom interview and the uh, rest is history from there. So that's, that's how I landed where I am now. And that's kind of the, the background on the financial advisor side of it. Uh, there's a ton of potential for anybody considering the financial advisor side, but it's going to take you a minimum of three to five years to build up any business. So. Yeah, because um, it's a it's a trust based thing, right? Like they've got to trust you. Massive. You've got yeah. I mean, it's a it's a huge it's a relationship thing, just like with detailing. Yeah, and and the boat world is that way. So I I had that experience. I I knew how to work people, know how to work people, and and talk to them, and and yeah, they they all everybody has a different language. So you just mm -hmm. you kind of figure out the way to talk to that. But you know, when you're asking someone to entrust, you know, hundred thousand million dollars, whatever, you know, with you, and they. I'm just knocking on your door. It's like, eh, it takes a little bit of time. <laughs> right. Um, so I, uh, you know, I still have some friends that are doing it. They're doing well, but I, I just like being in the boat world a lot better. Uh, it's kind of where I feel at home. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the proverbial, you're back in the womb type of thing with the water. Mm -hmm. And I just love the lifestyle. I, I like helping people enjoy it, you know, engage in it and all that. So that's, it's just kind of where I've landed, you know, after the, the motorcycle and the automotive side of things. Um, I got really lucky. And again, it's a relationship. You, you kind of know some people. And that's how I got into Yamaha. And it just uh, blossomed from there. So talk to me about that. You you have a background in all of those. So my guess would be that you're a, you're are you a natural salesperson? And then I talk about business ownership in a way that the best business owners are not necessarily – the best at whatever industry that they're in, but they're, they're really, really good at being a business owner in those things. And I think sales people are the same. Like they, they talk about sales people, like they could sell ice to an Eskimo, right? Like that's the, yeah. you know, is that something that you kind of grew up with? No, not really. I, I actually went to school, um, started out in accounting and you know, I just, I like numbers. I like data. I like that kind of stuff. Um, transferred into marketing after a number of years, realizing that, that accounting was a little boring. Um, so I just, I, yeah, I'm not a, not a social butterfly, but I'm not necessarily a wallflower. So I, I like dealing with people. I like helping them. I like coaching them. And for me, I'm not a, not a hardcore salesperson as far as high intensity. I, I'm much more about the, the relationship and I know the transaction will occur. 
uh, but I, I like the relationship side of it. And so that's kind of that's kind of how I operate. Mm. I, I dealt with enough of the district managers, regional managers at, at my previous jobs and, and picked up a lot of traits and what not to do, and what to do, how to treat people, how to talk to them. And it just kind of kind of morphed into it. Uh, a late bloomer, if you want to call it that. Yeah. You, you, you use the phrase, I know how to work people earlier. And, yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and, and honestly, I use that, I use that same terminology. I talk about, um, it's this fine line, right? Like you're, li- you're kind of manipulating the, the conversation, right? Right. But when you use manipulation, it sounds like it's a bad thing, but you're, it's, it's really a steering the boat kind of a thing. Could you just walk me through what that means and how that how that works in in relationship building? I talk a lot about relationships. Right. They talk about not making, you know, if it's transactional, if everything that you're doing is transactional, it's just that one, you know, maybe right. two, but it, it's not yep. going to get you anywhere. But talk to me about that working working people kind of a thing and how that goes. Yeah, and I, and I, you know, it's kind of a it's a weird terminology. It's it's like, you know, when I say I'm I'm targeting a prospect, you know, I have some people that's like, well, that sounds, you know, that sounds bad. It's like, well, you know, it's just, it's just word speak basically. But yeah, you know, working people, it's, it's for me, I like asking the questions when I, when I worked boat shows with the, uh, the couple of, couple of boat brands I worked with and working with boat salespeople, it's like, you're not, you're not here to sell someone something. You're here to help them buy something. And typically it's a lifestyle. So working people, it, it for me is, is digging into what motivates them, you know, what they're, are they a DNA type person? So someone that likes getting their hands dirty, likes, you know, f- uh, finagling things and working with things, or are they image conscious where they have this, you know, for example, a boat that's nice and shiny and new, and, and that's what drives them. They like getting the compliments on it. Or, you know, are you someone that, that likes getting your hands dirty, likes seeing that project to completion? And so that's what I mean by working people is mm. you figure out, what motivates them, uh, their pain points, you know, what what really drives them to be where they are and, and in front of me as to you know, my product or, or my solution. And so what's going, what do I offer? What do I have? What, what can I present to them that, that's going to make their, their pain point go away, make their life easier, make their life more enjoyable? And so that's what I mean by working people. It's just, you know, it's not, maybe I should say working with people, working for people. Um, I mean, I don't take offense at it. I think that that's no, I mean, I you're, 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 work, you're working the process, right? right? And really what you mean, you're doing the work to identify those pain points. And so like, for example, in the automo- in with cars and or boats, right? Some of that, this one pain point may be like, I'm not image conscious, um, but I use my boat to go and be with my family. It's what, you know, right. just like camping or, or any autumn, any hobby yeah. marine boating is like, this is your life, right? Like, you know, you're, you're cleaning the boat and then you're taking the boat out and then you're right. parking the boat and then you're cleaning <laughs> it again. And then, you know, right. lather, rinse, repeat, but it's like part of yeah. your family experience. So when you're selling something like G technic, um, you're like, would you like to have less time cleaning the boat and more time right. enjoying time with your family? Right. Like exactly. that's a big part of that. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a major part of it. It's, you know, we, we, we tout the, the protection benefits uh, and you know, you're, you're enhancing the, the, the look of it. You're, you're preserving the look of it. You're preserving your investment. All the boating is not necessarily an investment, but yeah, at the end of the day, people are buying boats to, enjoy what they've earned, enjoy their life. No one needs a boat. There's mm-hmm. in, in all of the industries, there's absolutely no logic to boating because no one needs a boat. <laughs> Unless you're <laughs> so, a professional fisherman. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and that's, you know, minuscule amount of people. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, but, but people are doing this because it's, it's a lifestyle that you can't get on land and you can get to places where you can't get to by bicycle, motorcycle, car, whatever. RV. And so to me, it's, it's, you know, that's, that's what we're presenting is, is we're helping you enjoy that lifestyle. Cleaning a boat, owning a boat, especially in saltwater is a major hassle. Mm. So we want you to enjoy more boating time, less cleaning time and enjoy the lifestyle. Spend more time with your friends and family. And that's how we, that's how we present it. 
Yeah, which is super important. You know, anybody that's listening to this wants these better sales techniques and closing techniques and all that. So, like, whether you're a, a boat detailer, uh, uh, cars, automotive, tent, PPF, it doesn't really matter. But the whole point is you have to figure out where the person's coming from, right? what those pain points are, and then and then present how, how your product and services uh, take mm -hmm. those pain points away, right? Right, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, it's a value add to their life, basically. And you're just figuring out the best way to, to accomplish that for them. Yeah. And, you know, they all, they all have a, a certain budget. They all have a certain desire. And, to, you know, do we offer something that, that fits within that realm of what they're looking for? Yeah. And I like that. I like the idea that no one needs a boat because really no one needs a, <laughs> no, no one needs, you know, anything but a very basic automobile that doesn't True. break down. Right. Like we don't need right. supercars. We don't need, you know, if you're, if, you know, they're, Contrary to what Dave Ramsey said, some people actually do need a hundred fifty thousand dollar F three fifty to do their job. <laughs> this um, is true. Yeah. <laughs> but detailing is a luxury. Detailing yeah. is not a necessary service, regardless of how we want to tell ourselves in the detailing industry, marine, automotive, or otherwise. Right. It's a luxury service, right? Like said, people don't need to hire a detailer to clean their car. It's it's yeah. you know, uh, yeah, paint and, correction you know, and all I, that. But right. Yeah, and I, I grew up that way. I, I'm like like you said in my bio, uh, intro. I'm I'm not a detailer. I, I know how to do it. Um, I know I, I can create work for people, so you don't necessarily want me running a machine. But you know, I, I I know what to do. I know how to do it. I've had training from from our guys, that the YouTube University stuff and all of that. But yeah, prior to that, I, it was truly a a luxury. It's like I can wash my own car. Yeah, I, I use crappy products that I learn now are, are the worst things for your car surface. But you know, getting someone in to to spend you know four hours to to wash and wax my car was like that's crap. Like, <laughs> now that I'm in it and I see the results and and see the work that goes into it, it's like I, I really really appreciate the the time, effort, the willingness of of these people to to start their own businesses. But yeah, you know, that the products that are needed. Uh, the time that's needed, liability insurance, all these ins ancillary type things that you don't think about. It's like, okay, well, that's why that costs what it does. And so yeah. I definitely appreciate it a lot more and, and love the results even more. Yeah. And that's why it's so important to project that professionalism, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I saw a Facebook post yesterday, a local guy, I'm detailing cars. It'll be cheaper than anybody else in town. And I resisted the temptation to go, can you, <laughs> can you please provide me with your insurance certificate? Right. You know, like the training aspect, I'm not that concerned about, but like, dude, if you're going to take my $70,000 Jeep and work on right. it, you know, what, what happens when you do something to it or whatever. So yeah. I talked a lot about insurance and certifications and all that stuff early on, but, um, yeah, you know, a lot of these guys that are listening, guys and girls that are listening to this are going to be building brands. Like you're trying mm -hmm. to build a business. And I think what a lot of people miss, um, and I've, I've missed this. I've, I have a bunch of brands and, and I'm, I'm now trying to actually concentrate more on creating an actual brand, um, for some of these, instead of okay. just a bit, instead of just a business or a, or a product or whatever. Right. So you were tasked with, you know, business <laughs> development, Stu and, um, Stu and Rob kind of got you on that one. Um, but like, <laughs> You're basically building an entire mm -hmm. subset of a major brand in an, in an entire country, right? Like mm -hmm. what what has right. that what has that been like? Uh, and don't um, worry, Rob will never see this, so you know. And, yeah, I'll, I know right? I'll, I'll tell I'll tell Stuart you're under duress. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's put it this way: this this receding, yeah, there, there's part of it, so um, in the grace, but. No, it's um, yeah, it is. It's, it's building a division within us, an established brand, an established business uh, that is in an industry that is really, really, really slow to adopt and adapt. Mm. So boating is very traditional. I say it all the time. It's it's a very traditional business because they're very slow to adapt. It's a buff and wax, rinse and repeat type process that is taking a lot of education. What we're seeing now is that a lot of these brokers, dealers, boat owners, they've had their vehicles, tow vehicles, work vehicles, whatever, coded and corrected, and they see the benefit now. 
And so after it's been, you know, three and a half years of, of, a, of a slog and slow process, working boat shows, doing trade shows, a lot of education, a lot of marketing spend to, to really build the awareness of what's going on, what we offer. And then again, learning how to pronounce the name and the fact we're, you know, we're, we're 23 years in business. The marine side is new, yes, but the, the, the company, the technology, the product line, the, the science behind everything is, is really longstanding. Uh, but now we're seeing a lot of those people have their vehicles coded, and it's been a year, year and a half, so they see the real benefits of it. And now we're starting to see that traction gained on the boat side where they understand what it is, they understand the process, they know it's not inexpensive, but they know when they amortize that initial cost over three to five years, it more than pays for itself. So that education, those light bulbs are going off now, and we're starting to, to benefit from that, that traction. And it's, and yeah, it's, it's, it's truly building a, a, a business within a business. Yeah, and kind of resting mostly on your shoulders. You're doing all the travel and, and boat mm -hmm. shows and all that stuff. Is there a way that you communicate? So it's like a product that people don't know they need. Right, like right. It, 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 you know, how do you communicate that into an entire kind of you know subculture? The boating, the boating world yeah. is its own subculture, right? And so you have oh, yeah. to get that. It's that slow adoption rate and laggards mm -hmm. and all those marketing terms. Um, how are you communicating that with? Are you kind of doing more top down, like let's educate the the manufacturers and the dealers and all that? Or are you trying to do it more bottom up with or both at simultaneously? Uh, it's kind of in the middle, and what we've learned over the years is the manufacturers, distributors, resellers typically don't act until they get some sort of demand uh, pipeline built up. Mm. So if they're, so I, I worked for Boston Whaler for a few years as a rep. So as if a customer is not clamoring for something, the factory doesn't do it, and the dealers don't do it. Mm. So we, we're doing. There is a lot of ground up type uh, grassroots type uh, marketing and education campaigns. But majority of what we're seeing now is the growth is through the, the detailers and installers out there. So as we grow that network, then they have those relationships with the, with the builders, with the OEMs, with the brokers, with the distributors that gives us that gravitas or cachet to go in and say, this is who we are as a factory. And this is how we support this particular installer detailer, your customer, this is how we can support you and, and help the full breadth and, and width of your customer base. Uh, so it's, it's, it's been a, it's a multi prong I call it multi-pronged effort uh, because we want the builders, we want the OEMs, we want the distributors, we want the retailers, we want the installers, and we want the customers or the uh, end user, the boat owner. And so it's, it's just been, I won't say scattershot, even though the first year was really scattershot because I, I had to learn the brands, learn the players, learn how distribution worked, learn detailing. Uh, so the first year was was kind of scattershot. Then after that, we kind of focused in on a few boat shows, a couple of trade shows, and really were able to hone our message a lot tighter uh, to, to really focus in on who we needed to focus on. I like that. Um, who So... I, you know, truth be told, if you listen to this podcast, you probably already know this, but I used to work for G Technic as part of the, yep. the executive team. <laughs> I, I helped develop the, the nationwide network on the automotive side. Right. How, what does that look like now for the Marine side? I know when, when I was there, we really didn't have anything. We had, right. you know, we had some guys that kind of did both. We had, you know, Parker Richards, who I can still never get to wear shoes because he always wears flip flops everywhere. Um, you know, I've changed all, that. He wears uh, shoes at shows now. Yeah. He wears shoes at shows. That's oh, yeah. that's great. Yeah, but <laughs> you know, some of these no. some of these different guys that kind of were like pseudo auto, like we kind of just slid them in automotively because yeah. that that was the only place they had to fit. What does that network look like now? Like in terms of who's out there, what their qualifications are. They're they're you know we've got Keith out there too, and you know mm -hmm. a bunch of different guys and girls. How, how what does that look like in in um and just from a network standpoint? Right. So when I when I came on board, we had so we on the automotive side, they're called accredited detailers, which was what you did and, and left that for some others uh, on the marine side. Of course, we have to be different. So we, we call them certified installers. Mm. When I started, we had 18 or 20 certified installers in our ranks, and we're currently right around 150. 
And the more we've done it, the more we're trying to mimic the accredited detailer side of things. So we, we do some serious vetting uh, where I'm looking for those A and B detailers who, you know, they're professionals, they have their insurance, they have their business license. You know, they, they run a business like a business first. Mm -hmm. They just happen to be bo really good boat detailers and they understand ceramics. They've either done ceramics or, uh, or applied ceramic coatings. They understand what's there. They understand how to talk to the customer about that. So that's my initial vetting process. Occasionally I'll get a good C, C plus type detailer that, that has that potential. But at the end of the day, I'm looking for those A and B detailers who, who can represent the, the brand properly know how to talk to customers, are professional, know how to run a business, and have all of that proper licensing and insurance and bonding and, and everything you need as a business. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we're we're heavily concentrated in the Southeast, as you would expect, <clears throat> but we we have a, a, some really good ones out in the, uh, the panhandle of Florida, over into Texas, Louisiana, and then all the way up the Eastern seaboard, uh, working the, the Northeast a little bit harder, uh, we've got a couple out in Seattle area, a few in the, the mid to Southern California area. Uh, so there's there are tons of potential out there. And so that's that's how we, we look at it. You know, I'll, I'll data mine social media channels. I see who likes certain things. And so it's a deep dive for me because I, I want to make sure that who we bring on board uh, is going to represent the brand properly. Yeah, if you've got ten thousand, if you've got ten thousand guys out there uh, or shops out there, you know it's and you have one that's not that great or two, right. then it's not a big deal. When you got one hundred and fifty and you got one or two, yeah, then it's you know it's just statistically <laughs> a bigger problem, right? Yeah, and the and the boating world is, it, I, I call it the last bastion of free enterprise, because the barriers to entry are are pretty minimal, almost non-existent. Yeah, your regulations are pretty slim. You're not having your, your DMV, you're not having the DOT, all of those types of things that you get on the, the motorcycle and, and automotive side. Uh, yeah, there's some EPA regs and things like that, but 99% of our, 95% of our installers are mobile. So there's a lot, of, a lot of leeway, a lot of generosity granted to them. And so that's, that's why it's, it's harder to, to really nail down those good installers, good detailers who are, who are going to, yeah, one last and two represent the brand properly uh, because it, you can come in you carry a bucket of water and a and a mitt on a stick and, and you know you're you're a boat washer and a boat detailer mm, yeah and you know back to what we were talking about before those relationships a lot of these um guys that have been around you know those those high level business owners have relationships at the marinas Right, they can be trusted, and you want guys that are not out there throwing, you know, acid, muriatic acid <laughs> on the side of the boat while it's in the while it's in the slip, right? Like yeah. you know, they they have to be conscious of those kind of things. So it's a level of professionalism that you're really looking yeah. for. Yeah, and that's that's again, that's the education side of things because it is there's there's so many wives tales, old wives tales that are that still float around that that so many old old school boaters preach preach live by die by and so it, it's it's that as you see the changing of the guard with the younger generation coming in and they they are much more adept with with, with the technology and science we're starting that's why again we're we're starting to see that change mm -hmm. um one of the jokes i make is when you walk into a marina and it sounds like a an old school two-stroke motocross race, you know, full bore turned up to 11. It's like, yeah, maybe you want to rethink going into there. So, but, uh, yeah. yeah, you want you want a little different technology in, in, <laughs> in, in that case. Uh, um, my brother used to work for Mercury Marine. I grew up in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And so okay, they yeah. were, we, we grew up, uh, the, the factory was right down the road and all that. So right. it sounds like a lot of the customer base is in, in like what I would consider bigger boat worlds right like you're yeah. you know it, it, and but there seems like a huge opportunity for a place like texas you know up northern texas oh, oklahoma yeah. we had you know like we all, we had jet boats we had normal boats and we did all sorts of boating this episode is brought to you by detailers roadmap hey spoiler alert that's us 
We all know you need a kick-ass website in order to be successful with your business. The good news is at Detailers Roadmap, kick-ass websites, that's kind of what we do. With the latest performance, designs, and SEO strategies, Detailers Roadmap is your one-stop shop to be successful on the web. And don't forget, we have the best support team in the industry. Whether you're an existing partner looking to improve your lead generation or you need a brand new website, Detailers Roadmap is here to help you be successful on the web. So go to detailersroadmap.com forward slash success and get started today. That's detailersroadmap.com forward slash S-U-C-C-E-S-S. Stuff, and I think I told you, and uh, I don't know if I emailed you this, but <laughs> you we actually, did. we were, we, Tim Oberlander um, in high Uh-oh. school, we were we were we were we were water skiing behind his uh let's call it inadequate boat for the size of the boy because we were like 16 or right. 17 and he we're went happy. out and we were slow I mean did a cut and he actually the inertia of him going out was so high <laughs> that it it pulled the back end of the boat into the water and sank it uh, that's and then it's, and we used the tow rope for skiing to pull it back out of the water <laughs> <laughs> but but all that to say like i grew up in a in a different kind of world like we're not talking about big boston whalers and center consoles right. and all that like we're jet boats and bass boats mm-hmm. and and those kind of things is that a whole different market segment for you guys that you're kind of exploring yeah we're exploring all of them and you know i getting back to the or going back to the water skiing and stuff i i tried water skiing a few times and got upright and then within two seconds was face first <laughs> it's like i i couldn't figure out the physics of all of that and so i was like okay i'm, I'm better I'm on two that. than i i'm better on two than i am on one uh i'm actually gonna record i'm gonna record with bob phillips uh in a couple of hours actually for and okay. uh from pns and he's a barefoot guy like oh, i geez. i met a guy back in the do you remember a guy named banana george blair that so really familiar. well it was like early 90s i'm aging myself but this guy he was a barefoot skier and had been okay. like his whole life and i met him when he was 92 years old oh wow and the dude was still barefoot skiing like yep. all the time and like you, you, you if you're listening to this podcast and you don't know how this look up banana george blair on youtube i'm sure there's some vhs tapes that have been, <laughs> been right. converted yeah. over but yeah I, i'm not a great skier ev- either even though i even though i i uh i grew up doing it but yeah no i just i, I didn't have that gene i you know skateboards uh <laughs> ice skating water skiing snow skiing like yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's a recipe for disaster <laughs> just sit in the captain's chair you could be the toe you'll yeah. you'll do the toe <laughs> yeah it's like so, spit it up yeah. go yeah. yeah so what does no. that kind of market look like like how do you how do you decide being a small team um it, how do you decide which one to attack first is it just like lowest hanging fruit is it relationship based you know how do you how do you do that yeah it's it's both um you know you want the wins from the low hanging fruit and so we we've, we've gotten that yeah we the, the product's applicable to a 13 foot whaler all the way up to 300 foot super mega yacht you know we it's something that works for everybody. <clears throat> and so we, we have a lot of the ski boats, tow boats. We have a lot of bass boats that are, that are coded, you know, using our product pretty regularly because we have good installers in those areas. And so not everybody is, is going to be in a, in a market that supports the big boats. Um, so you, you just work to what, uh, whatever's there. You know, one of the challenges with the boating world is there's 10 or 12 different segments that you have to reach across. Mm. And, Kind of unlike the or unlike the automotive world where you, you do have a few personalities who who cross over, say you're drifting to your road racing to your show cars to your low riders, you know, you have a few people that you can pick that they really transcend uh, transcend a, a few of those segments. There's no one like that in boating. So you have to pinpoint each segment, go at it, pick some low hanging fruit, create some wins, and just build the mon- momentum from there. Um, but we do find that at least with our brand, our installers, our customers, we, we do tend to gravitate to say a 30 foot plus type market. So you're, you're looking at, you know, $300,000 plus, but we have plenty of installers who are working on $60,000 shallow water boats in Texas, the hundred thousand dollar ski boats in Colorado and, and, yeah, the cruisers and, and things like that. So we're we're across the board, no doubt. Mm. Um, we just, 
you know, some of the segments have a much higher volume sales wise, and and those are kind of where we uh, where we focused a little bit more effort on those. And yeah, the big one. Like go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the big the big market big segment is, is the center console market. Mm. And so we partnered with the Gale Force Twins, who run a 33-foot Invincible brand, which is a, it's a center console boat built, on, uh, built in Florida. Yeah, their, their boat is probably, just guessing, about a $400,000, $425,000 boat. <clears throat> but that's, that's a personality or two personalities that we've, we've teamed up with who are really good presenters. They're, they're good spokespeople, good, good ambassadors, very well-educated, presentable but they know what's going on and they, and they use their boats pretty religiously. And so they're, they're good for us on that perspective. Are those the get, what are they, what's their kind of um, spin? What are they typically, what is their, what is their business? What do they do most of all? So primarily they do a lot of fishing. That's oh, right. That's right. Yeah. They're the guys I was thinking about. Yeah. 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 And they're, um, I can't remember how old they are, but they're, they're twins um, live in Florida. I think they're early or late twenties. Uh, but they they graduated from Uni- University of Miami with biology degrees, mm. so they 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 are really much into the ocean preservation, uh, fishing regulations, things like that. But a lot of lifestyle, and uh, but they're very intelligent. They're they're kind of our our perfect type ambassadors. That's great. Um, it, it seems like with trying to market a product like I mean any coatings, automotive coatings are the same way. High level automotive is almost like a a percentage of value proposition that you have to get into a little bit, right? Like, you, mm-hmm. you know, you're not going to put CSU crystal serum ultra on a, you know, 1984 Honda civic, unless it's been restored, <laughs> right. you know, like, you know, beater. Right. And you're not going to, there's probably certain boats that they're not willing to invest the kind of money because it's expensive. Like it's because yeah. it does, it does what it does, what it says it does. Labor's mm-hmm. expensive. It's an expensive process. So I would guess yeah. there's a little bit of that also. Yeah, we we coach the installers to to really yeah, use your time wisely, use the product wisely, use your your labor wisely. There are plenty of boats that are not candidates, and we advise just you know, leave them alone. Put put bass coat or rinse on on them, and you know work them for a couple of months, and then have that person repaint the boat or re gel coat it, and then and then put the coating on it from there. Uh, yeah. But yeah, we you know, when we look at the, the average or the general rule of thumb I, I use is you look at the value of the boat and a, a good ceramic coating job, including labor products and all of that, should be about 1 to 1.25% of the, the, the value of the boat. And of that value of that cost, 20 to 25% of its product, the rest is labor. Mm. So teaching installers and detailers how to present that math to the customer that makes sense that's the other part of the education side that we have. But in the grand scheme of things, the product itself is not that expensive relative to the job that's being done. And, and so, you know, when you look at that value and, and then the, the, the value that it adds and brings to or keeps and retains on that boat, it pays for itself multiple times over. Yeah. And, you know, getting, getting people to understand that is, is, is part of the challenge. I, I would love for you, this is an education that, that, so, Walk me through the economics of boat ownership, especially let's talk about bigger boats, right? Like, I, you know, let's say 300 plus or whatever. Like when you get into yachts and stuff, the number is 10% operating costs yep. per year. So if you got a $30 million boat, it's $3 million a year just to freaking maintain that thing, right? Just, just to own it. Just to own it, not even yes. not even operate it, right? And right. so can you walk walk me through like that, value equation right because you you're you're then having that conversation with the customer and this is kind of an area if we've got a lot of uh, automotive detailers that listen to this right they don't they don't know this math and i I love the math because it's (laughs) it's insane and to your point no one would ever buy a boat on purpose if they actually knew the math (laughs) (laughs) right well okay so the the example that i i usually use is when i was at boston whaler the largest boat still in their lineup is a 420 outrage it's a four it's a 42 foot center console boat and it's it's averaging contract you know retail pricing now is 1.7 million dollars but it has a 600 gallon tank and if you 
fill that tank up at the marina with typical uh, ethanol-free fuel, you're running five to six dollars a gallon. So just to fill it up is three thousand to thirty-six hundred dollars. That's to just get it running. Uh, but you know, you're talking um, uh, launch fees, you're talking dockage fees, usage fees. All of the all of those fees add up, and so you know that one point seven million dollar boat. It, it's easy to buy. It's hard to maintain. It's like the luxury cars of the past. You, you can buy them and you, you see the clapped out Mercedes, the clapped out Porsche and stuff like that. Yeah, it's easy to buy. It's just, it's maintaining it and keeping it up to date. But you know, that 42 outrage, if you look at that from a, a full blown ceramic coating job, interior, exterior, brand new. So basically one step, maybe two steps of correction because regardless of the factory, the boats are, they need help. Mm -hmm. um, so you're talking, you know, three to four days of work and at a minimum, probably $300 a foot. So 12, anywhere from 12 to $15,000 to do a full, uh, correction and, and coating job on that boat. Mm. But when you look at the, the value of the boat itself, you're less than 1%. But when you look at the math of doing the periodic wash, period, periodic, uh, buff, periodic, wax you know two to three times a year minimum in florida i mean you're you're talking forty five hundred dollars a year for that so within that two to three year time frame it's more than paid for itself and you don't have to you're not degrading the, the surface of the boat because you have the protection of the coating that you're working on there's no oxidation yeah, the color fading is gone so all of that that you paid for is still there so that trade-in value, resale value, whatever, is is much greater percentage of what you bought it for than than one that hasn't been maintained that way. So I don't, I, you know, that's that's kind of where we are from the education side of things, and, and really making that that financial pitch to people uh, for the detailer and the installer. You know, that's a fifteen thousand dollar job for one week, basically. If you do even two a month, that's some really good income. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not easy because you're primarily outside, and you're you're dependent on the weather, things like that. But you know, at the end of the day, if you can do two of those a month, which is not unreasonable, if you if you're in that that world, um, yeah, that's some seriously good income. Yeah, boat detailing, uh, boat detailers, and boat detailing business owners are a special kind of crazy. Um, yeah, <laughs> because they love it, and like I detailed a ton of boats. We we actually have a lake not too far from here, even though our boating season is like 60 days. Right. So I had a bunch of boats that when I was detailing full, full time, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's a, that it's great income. Like to be able to do a half a million dollars a year in revenue by only doing three jobs a month, you know, or right. two, 2.25 jobs a month or whatever it, <laughs> right. it, it, it is not too bad. So, you know, and, and, you know, that next level too, I know that, when 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 I was there and we were talking to Rob and Stu and all that about some of the math, some of those higher end yachts have to be repainted every so often. And that and this extend wasn't one of the selling propositions that this extends that enough to save just an astronomical amount of money. Also, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you take your your I say average, if you take your you know, average hundred and twenty footer, um, <laughs> typically a tri deck, and it's that. That boat would, most of them are going to be valued in the 15 to $20 million range. So a, a paint job on one of those is going to be at least a million. Mm. And if you do a, uh, if you do a coating job that is coming in at say $125,000 and you can delay that paint job by two years, you know, that's, that's money well spent. Yeah. So there's less, you know, less dockage time, less downtime, less because most of them are chartered. So you, you, you know, you've still got that downtime that that takes away from your charter business. So you, it's a double whammy when you got to pay it out, and then you're not getting it in. Um, but you know, a lot of boats nowadays, their paint jobs you know, seven to tier, seven to ten year times time frame. So if you can add another twenty twenty five percent to that longevity for you know ten percent of the cost. Why not? Plus add all the, you know, lower maintenance 
yeah. along that along that seven to ten years. What's the sales process involved in at the at the installer level, right? Like there's you know, I'm not talking to the owner, right? I'm not talking right. to the captain. There's gate, there's gatekeepers, right? Like who, yeah. what is that? What does that process look like from a sales standpoint? Because it's something that automotive detailers, unless they're going after bigger dealerships, right? Like right. this is a process that they're, or <laughs> unless it's the, let me check with my wife, right? <laughs> unless the, unless the wife is the gatekeeper, you're, you're not yeah. really walking down this road that you would have to, to land a $20,000, $100,000 job, right? What does that look like? So it's, it's relationships and, you know, majority of those, you, yes, you will do, you, you deal with the captain. Um, and on the big boats, what you see is the captain is kind of the CEO of the boat. I won't say CEO. They're, they're the president of the boat. The owner is the CEO. Um, but they, they have the full P&L responsibility, profit and loss responsibility for that boat. So you're, you're talking to the captain who will then serve as the liaison between you and the owner. Mm. Occasionally the broker or the marina manager, someone like that will, will get in the way. But majority of the time you're going to be talking to the captain because they, they have that final decision-making process. And so we've met a number of them at, at boat shows. We've met a number of crew members who then introduce us to the captain to start those conversations. And then, yeah, from the factory, we'll refer them to a, a local installer that we know can handle the job. Uh, but not, I would say 95, 99% of it is relationship that already exists, or you're referred by another captain who has either had their, their vehicles done, had a smaller boat done, had their tender done, and it just kind of blossoms from there. So it's, it's a who you know type of thing. Yeah. And are the... And that goes back to not being transactional, right? And this right. this equates to every part of the detailing industry. It's relationship based. So if you're somebody that is at the marina all the time, you know, and you're you're well respected at a marina, for example, just yep. like at a dealership or community, you know, whatever. Like if I've got a great relationship with the marina manager, who then knows, you know, Captain Jim, and I'm like, hey, you know, is there a way that we can? Could you introduce me to him? then right. that, that might be a way to at least start to have that conversation. Do you find that there are some of the marine installers work directly with, with more, because most of them don't crisscross that much. Some of them do a little bit, yeah. but typically you're kind of both sides of the same coin, right? Are they working directly to say, hey, you know, and this would be smart if they're not, like, <laughs> you know, who do you know that's in the boating? In that, like, I'm a marine installer, right? I go to, I go to, you know, some automotive installer, an AD, to say, hey, what, you know, what, who do you know in your customer base, yep. and how can we do that? Is that something that they're doing, or do you, you're teaching? Yeah, yeah, we, we, my, my big thing is networking, mm -hmm. and because it is like you, like, like we keep saying, and, and it's true, it's relationships. So you, you want to do, you want to go to say boat shows and talk to other detailers that are there, talk to, you know, hand out your business card to the brokers and dealers and, and let people know who you are. Join the, the Rotary Club, join Toastmasters, join uh, B&I networks and things like that because it is, you know, majority of what we do nowadays is who you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to know what you know, but you have to get in the, the door first and a lot of that is who you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's the way the world works. And, and the boat world is the same way. So you have that relationship with the, the marina manager, the dock, dock master. You get out there, you return phone calls, you show up on time, you look good, you're professional, you're licensed, you're insured. Then you do a good job. And the dock talk spreads like crazy. Someone sees you working on that, that 100 footer and the things just pop in and you know, no holograms, no swirls. It's like, 10 feet deep as far as the way it looks mm. people notice that and the boat world is big on egos so you've got this 100 footer that you're working on that 120 footer doesn't look nearly as good that captain and that owner notice that and they're like i want that because i have a bigger boat and i deserve that and, mm -hmm. and so we see a lot of that going on too yeah, the ego is funny because automotive is obviously ego. But I remember, you know, having conversations with guys that would literally spend like twenty five grand to go three miles an hour faster <laughs> on the water yeah. because they were be faster than their buddy's boat. Like, Absolutely. dude, you're gonna you're gonna spend twenty five grand for three miles an hour, which is yeah. like 
nothing. I mean, it's it's way more on the water than it is on on land, but still at the yeah. same time, it's like, come on. But yeah. again, you play into that ego. You 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 figure out a Absolutely. way to have those conversation conversations. And yeah. for those guys that are in the auto, you know, on both sides of this, if you're listening to this, I talk about relationship and this stupid competition thing all the time in our industry. Set yeah. aside your ego and figure out a way. To, to integrate yourself into the whole automotive, uh, the whole detailing world in your community. And if you're in, right. obviously, a boating community, make sure you reach out um, and find those guys and, and, and girls, because I know there are female, uh, there's a lot of good female yeah. boat detailers out there as well. Um, oh, and uh, Amanda Lees, I think, is she still, yes. uh, she's still involved in that. So, she, yeah, she's great. Um, and there's, you know, the Ruscos and all that stuff out of, out of, out of uh, North Carolina are really good. But... All that to say, make sure you're doing that. Make sure you're following that process. I do want to ask like a, it's kind of a loaded question, um, <laughs> but marine detailers, and I made fun of Parker Richards, which I will do publicly and privately. <laughs> so, uh, you know, marine detailers are not known for their level of like, you know, professionalism, right? Like they're just kind of, because they're, I mean, traditional professionalism, right? right. In terms of like their appearance. And we have this conversation in the automotive world all the time because I'm like, dude, you're still wearing a T-shirt that cost you $15, and it looks like exactly what it is, which is you bought it three years ago. Right. Buy a new shirt, you know, like whatever. And so we have this in the automotive world too. But like, you know, you got flip flops and shorts and sunglasses and five o'clock shadow and crappy T-shirt, you know, all of that stuff. How does yeah. that work from an education standpoint to, and does it matter? Like, that's the other thing I'm curious about. Cause like in that world, right. You're not going to show up in a suit and tie, um, right. you know, almost like you said about going door to door, you're not going to show up in a suit and tie to a Marine, you know, a right. Marina manager. So what does that whole education thing look like? I'm, I'm actually just curious for my own edification. Yeah. No, it's, it's a sticky one because you, you, you don't want to offend anybody, but at the same time you have to, I mean, you're you're working on, you know, upwards of can possibly be upwards of twenty million dollar boats. So you you have there is a lot of that to it, and we are starting to see. So you'll you'll see the the tech material hoodies, um, a lot of those long sleeves. They'll wear wear the buffs, hats, and sunglasses because it's one you're getting direct reflection or direct mm -hmm. sunlight and reflection, so it's easy to get burned. Um, but we're starting to see a lot more of the uh, the branding, the business names on the shirts, front and back. The vans look good. The vans are clean. The vans are presentable, uh, and they and they they have their you know, a nice bag to carry the tools in, and things like that. So we are starting this. That's really where you see the big delineation between your C and D, uh, just starting out, don't know what they're doing kind of people, versus the the A and B detailers that we look for. Because they, they come in, they look like a team, they're dressed the same. Uh, yeah, they're going to have, most of them have beards. It's just the way it is. Yeah. Um, but they they have this confidence, almost a swagger, mm -hmm. where they're walking in and, and they know what they're doing. And they present this air of competence that that really transcends the the doubt and questions that some of these owners and marina people have. And then when they see the work, it's like, okay. These people are legit. I want to I want to work with them, and it just kind of compounds on itself. And then you see some of the other wannabes who who, if they're serious, they'll mimic those successful ones, and you'll start seeing them with their their branded shirts, their hats, uh, you know, just really put together a lot better. Mm -hmm. You you can walk around, say the Fort Lauderdale boat show, the Miami boat show, and you see the ones that are legit, and you see the ones that aren't. It's like, how did you get in here? And you're doing it right. So I want to talk to you. This one, man, maybe not so much. So. Yeah, I love that. And honestly, like looking at the crew of any one of those big boats would probably be a good thing to emulate, right? Like yep. they're freshly pressed. They usually have like a, a navy with white shorts and white <laughs> boat shoes, you know, whatever it is, right? Whatever yep. those colors of that boat are. But they're, you're not going to see a crew member running around mm. on a boat like that with, you know, with their shirts hanging out or you know mismatched or whatever right so that, that's probably a good thing to to emulate yeah. so you know i'd love to get and you know i want to be respectful of your time but i'd love to get like a couple of pieces of advice 
um, for a marine detailer out there, um, or even somebody that's in automotive and thinking about marine because you're like, wait a minute, I could do how many cars versus how many boats, <laughs> right? You know, I'm not great at math, but those sound pretty good. So <laughs> like kind of just a couple of pieces of advice for this, for these kind of small business owners. Uh, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because a boat presents a totally different animal than a car does. One, you're never going to get perfection on a boat. So my, my first piece of advice is always take your detailer hat, take your art artisan hat off, put your business hat on because you'll never get perfection out of a, out of a gel coat surface like you will on a car. So work to those expectations, ask the customer what they expect from this boat. And if you do an 80% job on the boat, guarantee it's hundred percent better than it was before. And the customer is going to be blown, blown away. So, you know, tamp down your expectations on what the finish is going to look like. Um, be respectful. Call call the people back. Answer your emails. Answer your phone call uh, within that twelve hour time period, and you'll be golden. Show up when you're going to say. Show up when you say you're going to show up, and do what you say you're going to do. Um, I always like to have a contract because it's it's too easy for someone to back out of something. So have a contract. Talk to, you know, there are three people you need to have when you incorporate your business, three people you have in your database. One's a lawyer, one's a financial advisor, one's an accountant. So you, those people will help you run your business professionally. They take care of all these items that they're specialists in. You specialize in detailing and, and uh, ceramic coating, stay there, do that. Yeah, you know, there are lanes for everybody and I think there, there's a reason for that. And so I think if you, tend to specialize in, in what you offer, you'll be a lot more successful than if you try to be a jack of all trades. And then for the auto guys, so we're, we're getting, I've had a few more, actually quite a few ADs, accredited detailers, uh, add the certified installer designation to their shingle because they see the benefits, they see the potential, and a lot of their high-end customers have boats of some sort. So it's just that natural transition into that boat world too. And so we're starting to see a lot more growth on that side. Um, but yeah, you know, the big thing for me is there's a lot of people are, buy, are buying boats that cost multiples of what their cars are and sometimes approach more than what a, a house costs. And you see how picky they are on their cars, see how picky they are on, their, on their, their houses, teach them to be that picky on their boats because it's just sitting out there getting beat to crap and <laughs> You've, you've sunk a ton of money into it just to buy it. So take care of that too. So there's, there's tons of opportunity for that. And so go into these situations, talk to your customers with a really open mind. Don't be afraid to ask for the, that referral and don't be afraid to ask for the sale. Uh, because you know, the, the saying I, I like is nothing happens until you sell something. So just abide by that and run with it. Nothing happens until you sell something. I think yep. that might be the title of this episode. That'll be a, <laughs> that, that'll be good. I love that advice. If someone wants to go get involved with Geotechnic, uh, Marine, what's the, what's the process for doing that? So on our website, and it's geotechnic.com, it is, there's a, uh, a section there to become a certified installer application. So fill that out. It comes to me directly. Um, and, you know, we'll, we'll start the, the process that way. We do have a, just to make a big plug, in September, on September 16th and 17th, we have a first of its kind in the marine detailing world, a summit. It's called G-Technic Marine Summit, and it's gtechnicmarinesummit.com. Uh, it's in Orlando, and it's a two-day gathering. Of, it's open to the public. It's not G-Technic specific. So anybody in the detailing world that wants to come in, and we're going to have 13 or 14 exhibitors, vendors, you know, product suppliers there. We'll have educational seminars, panel discussion, but really a lot of hands-on demonstrations uh, from the likes of Rupes, Urable, the big heavy heavyweights in the in the industry. Uh, but yeah, it's really open to to networking and growing the growing the awareness of of bow detailing, how to make it more professional, how to grow it, how to create this network. Because yeah, you know, if you get that 150 footer, you have a three person crew. Send up the bat signal. You've got people there that are gonna, that are going to answer your call every day, and so that's that's something that we're really proud of and, and uh, eager to see you know, the benefits of that. 
And so that's September 16th and 17th in Orlando, gtechnicmarinesummit.com. Uh, so those are the, you know, the things that we have going on from the company perspective to really grow the industry, grow, grow brand awareness at the end of the day because it is about sales. But if you don't create the, the groundswell of opportunity, the groundswell of, of uh, that movement, it's off or not. And so that's, that's, that's my job really is to grow all of that. Yeah, I like that. And Details Roadmap is is excited to be a part of that event. Right. Um, I don't know if I can talk Chris and let me go to Orlando or not yet. So we'll <laughs> we'll see we'll see if I'm there. Uh, even though I, I do know how to detail a boat, um, right? But, <laughs> so we'll give him a hard time. Hey yeah. Jay, I really appreciate you taking the time, man. I'm My excited pleasure. about what's you know. I think that you kind of came on on you were you were either right after I left or somewhere in that nature. And so to see the growth of the Marine brand over the last several years has been super cool. You've just been crushing it. It's been, you you. know, congratulations on all that and the whole team of installers and and the network and everything that you guys are doing. So I'm pretty, pretty excited about that too. So thanks so much, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm honored to be here and I'm glad to help. Head over to detailersroadmap.com and get your one-stop success solution today.